I'm Pete Tong and welcome to IMS 2015. I'm one of the founders of the International Music Summit. We've been here in Ibiza uh, for eight years. IMS is a thought leadership platform dedicated to educating, inspiring and motivating people in the world of electronic music. IMS Ibiza is the original event here at the Hard Rock Hotel in Playa de Bossa, but we also host annual events now in Los Angeles and Singapore. The last three days saw leading figures from the electronic music industry in a series of keynote speeches, interviews and panel discussions. They revealed insights into their careers, shared their ways of working, debated pressing issues and announced exciting new initiatives. Coming up, founder and CEO of SoundCloud, Alexander Lung sat down for a keynote interview. Kevin Watson presented the 2015 IMS Business Report. I spoke to Judy Weinstein and David Morales, and I spoke to legendary producer Trevor Horn. First though, Kevin Watson presented the IMS Business Report 2015. We think this year, the growth is not as high as last year, but it's still significant. We reckon it's up 12% year on year. And we reckon this industry, in terms of just an annual basis, is worth around 6.9 billion US dollars. What does it mean in terms of revenue? Well, if you look at the top 12 electronic music clubs in the US, they earned in revenue in 2014 around half a billion dollars. But in terms of the most sold tracks of the year, actually 27 of the 100 most sold tracks were electronic music tracks. If you want to watch that in more detail, click the button on the screen now. And a panel including the likes of Arthur Velasquez of VMV Music Management, Eddie Dean, owner of Passion New York and Macau, and Jeff Drake from the Ministry of Sound Recording sat down uh, to look in depth at the state of the Asian market today. And now it comes to international brands, the ultras of the world, the EDCs of the world, any of the brands on the SFX. You know, unfortunately, I mean, in China, I wouldn't say about Asia, no one really knows them. So it's not like, you know, anyone buying the brand or licensing the brand is going to get any significant value in promotion marketing. On top of that, all the social medias, you know, that everyone knows, the Facebook, Google, I mean, just, you know, YouTube, uh, Twitter, Instagram, they're all banned in China. In Japan, Korea, Philippines, Vietnam, Singapore, Jakarta, KL, I mean, Taipei, Hong Kong, Macau, they're all different. Every single goddamn one is different. Click the button on the screen if you want to watch more of that panel. I interviewed Ultra Records head honcho, Patrick Moxie, celebrating 20 years in the business. Spotify are fantastic because they're actually paying everyone properly. They're paying artists, writers, they're paying labels, they're doing a great job. They're growing exponentially. They're picking up over a million paid subs a month. SoundCloud is itself fantastic because there's 100,000 creators uploading new music to SoundCloud every night. Uh, you know, does SoundCloud, what does SoundCloud pay artists and writers right now? Little to nothing. Um, will they pay anybody anything in the near future? Not really. If you want to watch that in more detail, click the button on the screen now founder and CEO of SoundCloud, Alexander Lung, sat down for a keynote interview. We started with SoundCloud seven or eight years ago, so we've been on a long path with this. Um, and our first sort of step, our first chapter in that path was really building, how we saw it, by building great tools for artists. Kind of back to this point of like, okay, the web doesn't serve artists well. What can we build for artists to, to, to make better use of the web? That was sort of the first chapter. The second chapter was um, how do we open the platform up more to listeners so that from a creator perspective, you can really use it to build audience. So it's not just great tools, you can then also build it to, to, to build a larger audience. And then um, last year was sort of the, the, the first step of this third chapter with on SoundCloud, which was all about starting to monetize, um, starting to monetize content. Um, and, and if you look at all of that, you know, in, in total, it's a, it's a very simple arc in a way. Like what we're doing is actually remarkably straightforward. It's like building the best tools for artists, creating ways of building a large audience, and then creating ways for monetizing that audience. You can see the highlights from the panel by clicking the button on the screen now. 
Mark Lawrence, CEO of the Association for Electronic Music, was moderator on Can You Buy Success in Electronic Music with the likes of Clark Warner from Beatport and Martin Carvel from DJ Magazine. I genuinely think we live in the most meritocratic sort of times that there is. Like if you're good and people think you're good, then you'll succeed. And if, if you're crap and you buy loads of Facebook likes, it won't last very long. Click the button on the screen if you want to watch more of that panel. We discuss the ins and outs of financing careers. Some of the things that we look at um, you know, are very much technology differentiation, the market that you're attacking, and then how much traction you got. And then all of this has to be underpinned by the most fundamental thing that we look at is, can the CEO execute on this? Um, and you know, all too often, the CEO, the management team is um, lacking, and uh, it could be a great technology, but you know, if the CEO can't execute on it, you know, it's probably not a worthwhile investment. If you want to watch that in more detail, click the button on the screen now. Off the back of the BBC Three documentary, Radio One's B Traits hosted a panel discussing the role of illegal drugs in the electronic music scene. We can't ignore the fact that people are going to use illicit substances in these venues, at these events, and just shutting them down is not going to fix anything. There will be new events, there'll be new clubs opening up. It, was, it is always gonna happen. We, we literally have to make a change somewhere else. If we were in America, we couldn't even have this conversation because we would be pilloried by the media and we would be demonized for endorsing and supporting drug use just by talking about it. It's not pro-drugs, it's anti-death. Um, we're in a place now where substances kill. It's not like, not like 20 years ago where a bad pill was just crap. We're now in a place where a bad pill kills. It's not an electronic music problem, it's a society problem. You just have society reflected in your festivals and in your clubs. Click the button on your screen now if you want to see that panel in more detail. I spoke to Judy Weinstein and David Morales, the brains behind the illustrious Def Mix, I don't believe Paris Hilton has passion for music. Right. So, I mean... That's going out on Twitter. <laughs> She'll slap me for that. <laughs> so, I say, one, have passion. Two is learn how to make music, because it's really important. If you know about creating music, it will make you a better DJ to understand melodies better, and then you can make records talk to each other even better. Def Mix is pretty much the same with just the lonely seat on the left where Frankie used to be. You know, David is still producing and DJing and so, you know, we're still who we are. We haven't changed, we just miss that guy. Christian Anandun from Cafe Mambo, Darren Hughes from We Love at Sankey's, Ernesto Senatore from Italy's Musicon, and defected Simon Dunmore were on the panel for the great IMS debate. More and more people are coming to the island and giving them a greater choice of venues and clubs is actually a really good thing. It attracts more people to the island and it makes the other clubs think about what they do because there's more competition. Competition is really good in business if you, if you look at it and use it to up your own game. Go watch highlights from that panel now by clicking the link on your screen. I sat down for a conversation with the man who pretty much invented the 80s. Pop music record producer, songwriter, musician and singer Trevor Horn. You kind of deconstructed music and started creating things that actually were, the, I, I think, were really like the foundations of hip-hop as well in terms of what people started sampling. Yeah, it, I, I remember the first time I played, played my friends Moments in Love and they said it's it's really boring. It's meant to be like 10 minutes long, you know? I, I mean, uh, in a sort of naive way, I was, I was thinking of something that you could have sex to, I suppose. It was because I thought sex was 10 minutes long. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to watch that in more detail, click the button on the screen now. The Young Guns Network was back for its second year, debating the challenges of marketing to millennials. Why are millennials different? The big thing is like, they really d dictate the schedule, you don't. You know, it's not a thing where you can say like, we're gonna have this album campaign and we're gonna drop this single here and this single here and then drop the album. Because 
I think millennials are willing to part with cash and they are willing to engage, but it has to be on their terms. And that concludes IMS 2015. It's been an action-packed three days. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. There are plenty of highlight videos from the event on our YouTube channel ready for you to watch right now. Highlights from the remaining panels will all be going live within the next week. So keep checking back at internationalmusicsummit.com. You'll also be able to find the audio versions of the full panels there to download and listen at your leisure. Until next time, from me, Pete Tong, here on the roof of the Hard Rock Hotel, see ya.